Is it too late for a spring capsule wardrobe? <laughs> Possibly. So maybe think of this as a late spring wardrobe with hints of summer. But I'm listening to your amazing suggestions that you left for me on my Q&A video. And a lot of those suggestions were more capsule wardrobe videos. And so here we are. I will film a summer capsule wardrobe in the next couple months. And then next week, I'm gonna put together a holiday capsule wardrobe because I'm going to Italy next week. So lots of capsules coming your way. I felt quite comfortable comfortable doing a spring capsule wardrobe quite late in the season because I feel like with the transitional months and spring especially the weather fluctuates so much that you actually end up wearing a lot of the kind of core pieces that make up your wardrobe. So I do think that this video will still be quite useful. The way I view a capsule wardrobe is that they are the kind of foundational pieces that make up your wardrobe. A capsule wardrobe is not the be all and end all. And that's also why I kind of didn't want to put a number on the amount of items that I have in this capsule as well. I think it is about 25 to 30 pieces, but I haven't counted the exact number because I don't want you to get hung up on how many pieces there are. It's not about how many pieces you have or don't have. A capsule wardrobe is so personal that as long as the piece that you have in your capsule follows the principle of A, you loving it, and B, being able to be styled with a majority of the other pieces in the capsule, then really that's all that matters. I mean, I definitely wear a lot more pieces than just this in my own wardrobe, but these are the pieces that I've picked out just to be a really good starting point. So starting with trousers and white jeans are my go-to, especially in the springtime. I just think they make any outfit look spring-like. <laughs> just adding in any white or cream shades. I think if you don't want to wear white, because that can be quite scary, I completely understand why, even just adding in like cream or ecru kind of shades of jeans would work really well. These ones are from Arquette. I got these last year and they always have these ones on the website. I love these. They're like the perfect sort of really straight cut. And because these are the cropped version, I didn't have to hem them, which as a five foot two girl is amazing. <laughs> so next I have a pair of blue jeans, which let's be honest, they are an all year round wardrobe staple. These ones are new. These are the Levi's 501s. And I don't know why I've never tried these jeans before because I love them so much. So these Levi's 501s, they come in, I think it's like three different leg lengths. This is the shortest leg length at a 26 inch and they hit me at the perfect cropped ankle length. I would size up in these because they have zero stretch in them. They are like a very rigid tight denim, but make sure you have a look at the composition because sometimes in the different washes, some of the different washes do have stretch in them. So if it says 100% cotton, that means there's no stretch. But if there's um, like one or 2% elastane, that means there's a little bit of stretch in them. These are really tight in the hips and the thighs and then straight down from the knee, which is personally what I think is most flattering on myself. So I am really, really liking these at the moment. I know I still owe you guys a petite jeans video. It's coming, I promise. Think of this as a little taster. <laughs> Next for trousers, I have cream and black kind of relaxed um, tailored trousers. These cream ones are from Pixie Market. These are the Jamie trousers, I believe they're called. They come in quite a few different colors. I really like the fit of these. They're very sort of comfortable, easy to pair with my trainers or could even dress them up with a little bit of heeled sandal. These are, of course, my favorite black trousers. You have seen these a million times on my channel. They are from And Other Stories. They are the relaxed crease, relaxed press crease trousers. And again, these are both wardrobe staples that I would wear pretty much all year round. Maybe not so much this color, but 100% the black ones I wear all year round. They just work with everything. All of my jumpers, my jackets, t-shirts, tank tops. They just work with everything. <laughs> so onto skirts and dresses now. I don't have too many that I would consider as part of my personal capsule wardrobe just because I'm definitely more of a trousers and jeans type of person. But if skirts and dresses are your thing, then you have to make sure you have these pieces. And for me, they are these silk pieces. So firstly, I have a black slip 
silk skirt and then I have the same cut but as a dress. They're from the same brand, they're from Silk Laundry which in my opinion makes the best kind of silk pieces. The way they cut their pieces is so flattering, it just kind of skims you in all the right places and they just fit so well in my opinion. If you don't own this type of piece then I would definitely start with the black. I owned this skirt for about two or three years until I invested in the cream, cream colour? Do you call it cream? Maybe more like a um, champagne type colour? I just knew that I loved the black one so much that I wanted to add another neutral colour that I knew I would get a lot of wear out of. And so yeah, I wear these a lot during spring, summer. And then the same goes for the dress. I think if you're looking for a slip dress, definitely go for black first, and then you can kind of branch out into other colors. But I love this dress so much. I wear it kind of dressed down with a denim jacket and sandals, or you can easily dress it up. I mean, I've worn this to evening events before. It's just so simple. You can kind of wear very simple jewelry and be very understated. Or because this dress is so kind of simple, you can also wear bigger, louder jewelry and dress it up that way. There's just so many options with this kind of dress. So these I love. So moving on to tops now and tank tops. So this white one is from Arquette. I really like the cut of this one. I think it's really flattering on your shoulders. And then this one is a staple piece that I would rebuy again and again and again. This is from Totem. This is their tank top that they have in lots of different colors. These are obviously great for layering under shirts or jackets. They're so easy to kind of like tuck into your trousers or even tuck into the slip skirts because they're quite tight. They don't kind of bulge out and make any weird bumps anywhere. I'm personally more of a tank top person, but of course, if a t-shirt is more your style, then you go for a t-shirt. This is what I mean when I say a capsule wardrobe is so personal. Next, I have a another top, which is a waistcoat. It could be argued both ways, whether this is a trendy or kind of like a basic core capsule wardrobe piece. I think it just depends on your own personal style. For me, I think that this is a really great kind of core foundational piece for your wardrobe. I've worn it with probably all of these trousers <laughs> here. I've worn it with these um, slip skirts. I've worn it open with the slip dress. So for me, this is a really great piece that I can get so much wear out of. Then of course we have the cotton shirts. So I think for core sort of pieces, 100% a white shirt, obviously, and then a blue and white stripe, especially for spring. A blue and white stripe makes any outfit just, it just brings it into that kind of spring summer feeling. This white one is from Cezanne. This is the Max shirt. And then this blue one is a kind of new-ish piece that I got from Mango. As I've kind of mentioned before, I am trying to add in a little bit more color into my wardrobe. And so I do also have this green, mint green, pistachio green shirt. I really like this one. It's an oversized silhouette, which is right up my alley. I like my shirts to be a little bit more relaxed and oversized. And again, the color is kind of completely up to your personal preference. So I went for this sort of pale green color because it's a color I don't have in my wardrobe. But at the same time, I think that the tone and the shade of it still works with all of my other neutral pieces. The color really sort of depends on what you like and what else is in your wardrobe. And that's what's so great about capsule wardrobes is I can show you mine and what I have picked out. But at the end of the day, it's not about buying these same items. It's kind of like thinking about what you would like to add to your capsule wardrobe or how you can kind of use this as inspiration for your own capsule wardrobes. So of course we have a couple of knits because the weather does change so much. And in your spring capsule wardrobe, you have to have a striped knit. So this one is the one from Arquette that everyone and their mother seems to own. 
But it's such a good piece that I almost don't mind that a lot of people have this one. This one is 100% cotton, which means that even though it's quite thick, it's still quite breathable and light, which I think you want in the springtime. And then I have two cashmere knits. So one black v-neck, which I really like the shape of. It's not super tight, so I think that works quite nicely in the springtime. And then I have this beige round neck one. And what's great about these kind of thinner jumpers is that you can also use them as a layering piece around your shoulders and you can add that sort of extra layer of interest into your outfits. Not to mention it does also keep you warm, which is great. <laughs> so now onto the more interesting part of a spring capsule wardrobe, which are jackets and shoes. I think that jackets and shoes are really the key pieces that bring your wardrobe from winter to spring because I mean, you'll wear your base layers such as your t-shirt and jeans. You'll wear these pieces with maybe boots and a wool coat in the winter. And then when it comes to spring, you'll probably still wear the same base, but you'll wear it with a lighter jacket such as a trench coat and then change your boots to like canvas sneakers or something like that. So in that way, I think that when you concentrate on outerwear and shoes for the springtime, that is really what brings your wardrobe from the cold weather into the warmer springtime. So let's start with, of course, the most classic piece of any spring wardrobe, which is a trench coat. This one I already showed in my last video, but of course I'm going to show it to you again because it's my new trench coat. This one is from Nilby P. I got it on W Concept. It is a single breasted design. It is fully lined and it is beautiful. <laughs> if you have been with my channel for a while then you know that I previously bought a trench coat from this same brand and I have loved it so much. I've worn it for the past two or three years and I know you guys are such big fans of it as well. So I loved it so much that I decided to go with the same brand again to update my trench coat. This one is just a much more minimal design. There's nothing kind of going on on the shoulders or the front. It just has the buttons going down, which I just really am leaning into that kind of minimal look this year. Next we have the classic, I don't know what you'd call it, the classic ladylike jacket? <laughs> I don't know. This is the one I have. It's from Lo Classic, which is another Korean brand. This kind of boucle, collarless, very feminine design has been very trendy this spring. However, I do think it is a piece that's forever classic. I really wanted to go for this particular one because I really liked that the shoulders were really strong and it is quite cropped, which works for my petite body. But there are so many on the high street at the moment because it is a really trendy piece that I will link to a couple of others as well. So moving on to the kind of more casual end of the spectrum, we have a denim jacket. Again, this is just another kind of core staple piece of any spring summer wardrobe. I've had this one for a few years now and I still really love it. I think if you buy the right shape for you personally, then this isn't a piece that you need to keep updating year after year. You kind of have the one that you love and then you can wear it for a very, very long time, hopefully. <laughs> Mine is in this kind of very relaxed, boxy fit, which I think works for how I like to wear my denim jackets. I don't like them to be too fitted. And again, it's also a little bit cropped, so I think that helps to kind of make me look taller. Um, and yeah, just works with a lot of pieces in my wardrobe. For me, I really like this light blue shade that I've picked it out in. But again, I think if you prefer a black denim jacket, then that works really well too. Or even I think gray would work really well. Just anything in those sort of neutral colors. This is just such a staple piece. So moving on to leather jackets now, and I think a leather jacket is also uh, another item that has been really trendy this spring. Specifically, a kind of oversized biker style jacket. And whilst I think that style looks really great on other people, it's not something I think works for me. I think it's a bit too, 
Um, I don't want to use the word edgy, but that's kind of the word that is coming into my brain. I just prefer something a bit more minimal, um, something that doesn't have too many buckles or zips going on. So the leather jacket that I've gone for is this brown one in this vintage design. So you can see that it's a lot more minimal than those sort of biker jackets that are really trendy at the moment. It just has um, a single zip going up the front and then the back has a little bit of detailing, but not too much. Again, that's how you can kind of adapt one trend, but make it for yourself. Okay, and then so lastly for jackets, we have of course a blazer. So if you have seen my channel before, watch any of my videos, you know that I adore blazers. For me, they just make me feel so much more put together. I feel very polished when I have them on and it's just such a great piece to wear with jeans because I wear a lot of jeans. Yeah, they just, they just go with everything. So this one is a linen and cotton blazer. It is just very light and easy to wear. It's lined in the top half, so this bit. So it's just very fluid, it moves really well. Another way to think of your wardrobe is to think of pieces that you love, for example, I love blazers, but buying them in colors or fabrics that match the correct season means that I can kind of make sure that my personal style still shines through each season. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so moving on to shoes now, and I have two pairs. Firstly, ballet flats. I've been wearing these so much this spring. I think they just look very chic with jeans. Like I said, I wear a lot of jeans. They just make everything look more sort of feminine and ladylike, I suppose. These ones are Arquette, and I've said this before, but I'll mention it again. I specifically like these ones because the vamp on the shoe is quite high. So I personally think they look sort of more modern and contemporary compared to a sort of more classic ballet flat. And then we have loafers. So these I actually bought on sale during the winter time and it hasn't been until the past couple weeks that I've been able to finally wear them. I went for this colour because I don't have a pair of loafers in this kind of grey shade and I think this kind of lighter colour makes a nice change from my black loafers but if you are delving into the world of loafers and you haven't before definitely get a black pair as your first pair. I just kind of wanted a bit of a change and like I said I like to kind of add those lighter and brighter colours once spring hits um, and so these have been a really great pair for me. Next for more casual shoes I love Converses. I think these are just such a great classic shoe to wear. I live in my black ones throughout kind of autumn, winter, and then once spring rolls around, I always get these ones back out. I love the way they look under jeans and trousers, and I just think you can't go wrong with a pair of Converses. And then lastly, when the weather really warms up, we can start getting out our summer sandals. So these are my Dear Francis tie slides. I do have a whole video review on Dear Francis if you want to watch it, but basically in a nutshell, I absolutely love these sandals so much. I've had these for two, three years. They are so comfortable. The quality is amazing. And they also look really chic, which is, I think, the most amazing part because it's very rare that you'll find a pair of sandals which are both comfortable and also chic. I think another pair of sandals that I find really comfortable are my Birkenstocks, but for me they're not the chicest looking sandals, but these are comfier than Birkenstocks and they look better, I guess. <laughs> so onto bags now. Of course, a basket bag is a spring summer staple. This one is the Loewe basket bag in a small. Again, I've had this one for two or three years and I just break it out every spring season. And for me, the small size is perfect. I think anything bigger is just too big for my frame. Someone asked me if this bag is still worth it today. I don't know if they meant in terms of price or in terms of if it's done, you know, is it overdone now? Me personally, I think, I don't think it's overdone. I think it's still a very, very chic bag. 
But in terms of the price, the price has gone up over the years, which of course, of course, once an item becomes popular, they just love to raise the prices. In that respect, I think that you're better off looking secondhand because there are quite a few on websites such as Bestia and Collective that are in really good condition. So you can get one that is cheaper than the current retail price. So I really like canvas bags during the spring summer season and I just recently got this one. So it's kind of like a bucket bag in this canvas material with this brown leather trim. I think it also comes in black and white, like the, the leather trim. I went for brown just because I love brown and tan in the summertime and I know I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this. As it's a bucket bag, it can just fit loads in, um, which I'm very excited about. I love bags that I can fit a water bottle in. And yeah, it's just a really great kind of easy, casual, everyday bag. You can make the strap a little bit shorter so it sits higher. I actually like to make it a bit shorter so it sits a bit higher up, like here. But you can also make it longer so that it sits crossbody. And yeah, I think this is such a great summer bag. And then lastly for bags, I have this one, which you would have seen on my channel a lot. This is the mini Reverie Hobo from Oleada. I did a whole video about this bag last summer and since then I used it all last summer. I used it through a little bit of autumn and then now I'm so excited to break out again for springtime. It's such a good size. It has a zip at the top so it's really kind of safe and secure when you're out and about in the city and in this kind of light shade it just it just brings that kind of spring summer feeling to any outfit. So that is my current spring capsule wardrobe. You would have seen a lot of these pieces in my past couple videos, which just proves how versatile and how easy they are to wear. I hope that this gave you some really good ideas on what items are good to invest in. You would have seen that quite a number of these pieces are also a few years old. So I think that shows you which pieces kind of stand the test of time as well. If you want more spring outfit inspiration, you can watch this video on screen. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.